Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Simmons. I'm a physical therapist and today we're going to talk about rotator cuff tears and what you can expect from the rehabilitation after the surgery. The plan today is to go through the stages of rotator cuff tear and the rehab. Uh, starting off with the injury, if you choose to do prehab, the surgery, and then the rehab is usually broken down into stages and we'll go through each of the main stages and kind of give you an idea of what to expect when you're in each stage. So how do you injure your rotator cuff or how do you even tear it? Most commonly, what I've seen is repetitive overuse injuries, and that can be overhead activity or just life in general. Sometimes these just wear out and you get small tears or big tears in them. Another common cause is trauma, falling, uh, having your arm twisted behind you, all these things can cause tears. The supraspinatus is the most commonly injured and torn and repaired rotator cuff muscle, and that's pictured on the right. The type and size of injury does not determine the pain and or function. Everyone's different. And that there's a lot of truth to that. And when they do x-rays and MRIs and all these things, you know, people say, oh, I have a, I have a large tear. Or, and it doesn't always mean that you have limited function or that you're going to have a lot of pain. It just means that there's a large tear in the muscle. And some people can adapt and use the muscles around the torn muscle to make up for it and don't end up having surgery. So the next line there, they're talking about the MRI. Even if the MRI is positive, it doesn't mean that you're going to end up needing surgery. The major determinant of whether or not you'll have surgery is your functional level. So if this tear is preventing you from going through your daily life the way you want to, then surgery is recommended. The other thing to keep in mind is that if the tear is a complete rupture, so there are two completely loose ends, it is generally recommended to get into surgery earlier so that the surgeon will have an easier chance and opportunity to get the two ends tied back together. There are some instances where the tear is small enough or the pain is low enough and the function is good enough that some people will choose to do prehab before deciding whether or not to do surgery or even doing it before they know they're going to have surgery. And, and this all depends. So the one type is the, the person that isn't so limited that they think they have to have surgery and they will do rehab with a physical therapist and see if they can increase the strength, motion, and function and decrease the pain to a point where they're happy going on with their lives. And in some cases, eliminating all the pain and regaining all of the function is certainly possible. And then there's a second group that chooses to do prehab before a surgery that they've already scheduled. And the whole purpose of this is to regain as much range of motion, strength, and increase the strength of the supporting structures in the shoulder before surgery in order to improve outcomes after surgery, and this is supported by the evidence. So there are many, many different versions of this surgery. It all depends on where the injury is, how big the injury is, if there's any other structures that are involved, the surgeon, the type of surgery performed. In other words, there's a lot of variability. But in general, most of these are performed on an outpatient basis. Uh, a lot of them can be performed arthroscopically. And almost unanimously, almost all the way across the board, you will have a sling or a brace, which are two of the pictures shown to the right after surgery. Uh, and then the last part I put on there is that immediate range of motion is usually okay, and that's why you're sent to physical therapy, is to maintain the range of motion in your shoulder. 
This does not mean that it's safe for you to move your shoulder actively, but it is safe for someone else, like your physical therapist, to move it for you in specific movement patterns and safe directions. The rehabilitation process will vary widely uh, for many of the reasons we talked about on the previous slide. Uh, the, the type, location, size of the tear, the surgeon's preference and type of surgery he performs, all are very variable. Then we'll talk about some of the guidelines that physicians and physical therapists use throughout the process. And then the main, the main goal of all of this is to control the pain, improve the range of motion, strengthening, and make sure that you have a solid home exercise program to augment what you do in physical therapy. Before we start going through these, again, I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that all of this is highly variable and will depend on a number of factors, but the, the guidelines and the outline here we're about to go through is kind of your generic version and will give you an idea of what you can expect. So rehab during day one through the first approximately six weeks is all passive. So you as the patient will not do anything active with that shoulder. You really just have to let it relax and hang there. So physical therapist will do range of motion exercises, uh, some mobility exercises with the joint, and we'll use pain relieving modalities, which is ice, heat, electrical stim, dry needling, and a number of different things to control the pain. And then you will be given a home exercise program. Again, this will be all passive exercises that shoulder will not be doing anything active. And then you'll meet with your physician, depending again on the, on the physician, a number of times throughout this, this section here, just as checkups and to alter any medications if needed and to see how you're doing. Between weeks six and eight in rehab is really where we start to get more things added to the program. So now you'll be doing what is called active assisted range of motion, which is where your arm does some of the work and you have a, a little bit of help either from the therapist or from your other arm. The PT will still be doing passive range of motion and joint mobilizations. And then in a lot of cases, we'll start adding isometric exercises where you're gently pushing against a stationary object. And then in some cases, when progress is good, we can even start doing some motions of that shoulder against gravity. Between weeks 8 and 12 is where your traditional, what you see is therapy comes in. And that's where you get out the elastic tubing. You do a lot of range of motion activities. You start doing the light resistance activities. Uh, all the pictures to the right are common activities that, and exercises that you'll do in the gym and at home. And this is where we start adding more res resistance and pushing you through a greater range of motion in all planes. From week 12 on, the rehab will really depend on how well you're doing. So as far as the physician's concerned, you're really just doing checkups unless there's something wrong. In physical therapy, we're really pushing range of motion. Uh, we're increasing resistance as you're able to and slowly returning you to the activities you want to get back to. And again, this is this stage more than any of them is, is very variable just because if you're doing really well, you can really progress to some higher level things. But there are a lot of cases where people still need a lot of focus on the strengthening and will be progressed a little bit slower. One of the things that most people ask on the first day is how often will I have to come? And we understand that it's a huge time commitment to come to physical therapy and to spend all the time in rehab. Uh, so here's a general outline. And again, this is highly variable on how well or poorly your shoulder is actually doing. So from zero to six weeks, a lot of this is just maintaining the motion and slowly progressing the motion as able to as the healing allows. 
And there's not a lot of complicated things going on in this stage, so that tends to be one to two times a week. And again, unless it's bad and the tightness is really bad, then we're able to keep the visits relatively low in this time period. Between six and eight weeks, and then again from eight to 12 weeks, this is really the kind of the meat and potatoes of the rehab after a rotator cuff tear and the most important stage. Um, two to three times a week is very common. Three times a week is probably more on the average just because there are so many very specific things that need to be done and targeted during this time frame that we don't want anything to be missed and we don't want anything to get hurt by doing something improperly. So this 6 to 12 week mark is really where most of your therapy time will be spent and also the most important time as far as strengthening and regaining all of the motion is concerned. From 12 weeks on, this again is extremely variable and depends entirely on how well or not well you're doing. In general, it can be one to three times a week or even per month uh, as, as you kind of wean yourself off of therapy and into your own program. Long-term outcomes tend to be very positive, and most people return to most of their activities, and there tend to be very minimal limitations. The amount of limitations you have after this type of surgery will depend on a lot of things, uh, mainly your age and your prior level of function. So the older you are and the more sedentary you were going into the surgery, the more limitations you're, you tend to have after the surgery. But in general, the results are very positive, certainly in a pain relief sense. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this brief patient education video. Uh, if you still have time, check out my website at thesmartlifeseries.com or facebook.com slash smartlifeseries. Thanks again. And if you're ever in Asheville, stop by and say hi. Thanks again.